It is still of popular belief that a pack of wolves is led by a pair of alpha wolves. An alpha male and an alpha female who fought their way up the group hierarchy and dominate with an iron fist. The terms alpha wolf or alpha dog even seem to be ingrained in our regular vocabulary. However, this belief of a strict ranking system with alphas and betas down to omegas who are supposed to be at the bottom of the rank is simply not true. At least when it comes to wolf packs in the wild. So let's take a closer look at what people got wrong about wolf packs. Our oldest friend, the wolf, was once one of the most distributed species in the world, living in basically every type of environment there is, except tropical forests. They are highly adaptable and still inhabit very different regions, including the Arctic tundra and the deserts of North America. Mostly they live in grasslands or wooded areas though. They have a shoulder height of about 70 to 90 centimeters and a length of up to 1.5 meters. They usually have a dense fur and a straight and bushy tail. They are carnivores and hunt bigger mammals like deer, caribou and wild boars, but also smaller animals when the opportunity arises. But enough with the general information. Let's get back to our main problem. The belief of a strict hierarchy with a dominant alpha pair at the top, which again is a false statement when it comes to wolves in the wild. Research and observation over the past decades rather have shown that wolf packs in the wild simply are a family unit consisting of parents, the breeders and their one to three year old offspring. So where did the idea of the famous alpha wolves actually come from? To answer that we can go as far back as 1947. Rudolf Schenkel, a Swiss behavioral researcher, studied the behavior of wolves at the Basel Zoo in Switzerland. Looking at a pack of up to 10 individuals that are not necessarily related to one another, kept in an area of about 10 to 20 meters, which is insanely small for a pack of wolves of up to 10 animals. In his research, Schenkel identified two primary wolves, a male and a female lead, and described them as, quote, first in the pack group. He also stated that there are, quote, violent rivalries, unquote, between individual members of the pack. He ultimately comes to the following conclusion, quote, by continuously controlling and suppressing all types of competition within the same sex, both alpha animals defend their social position. As a consequence, the alpha wolf was born. To Mr. Schenkel's credit though, he did mention back in 1947 that it is possible that wild wolves consist of a monogamous pair and their puppies. Unfortunately, this information was widely overlooked. Following that up, in 1970 the book the Wolf, Ecology and Behavior of an Endangered Species was published and written by David Mack, which furthermore helped to popularize the alpha concept. However, his research was also based on wolves in captivity in Michigan's Isle Royal National Park. But because his book was a fairly big success, the information about the competition-based pack hierarchy was out there. David Mack did eventually realize his mistake of portraying the wolf as a very authoritarian animal and since then tried to change it. In 1999, in 2000 he published two articles in which he tried to correct the misunderstanding. At that point he had spent 13 summers with a wild pack of wolves on Elomir Island in Canada and actually was able to acclimatize the pack to his presence so he could really try to study them up close. He soon realized that the commonly called alpha pair were simply the parents of the rest of the pack and as parents they would consequently lead the pack activities. In the article Alpha Status, Dominance and Division of Labor in Wolf Packs, he said, quote, Dominance fights with other wolves are rare, if they exist at all. During my 13 summers where I observed the pack, I saw none. Like we mentioned before, the parents decide about the pack, but they do not rule with dominance or violence against their own family. That of course excludes social dominance, which can rather be seen as explanations between the wolves and not actual aggressive behavior to show dominance. Other species like ourselves do similar things. A typical wolf pack in Scandinavia consists of six members, two parents and four puppies. Wolf packs in North America, mainly in the Yellowstone National Park, are a little bit different, which we will talk about in a minute. The Scandinavian wolves establish a territory and then mate between February and March, with the offspring being born in May. The female nurses the puppies in a den for a couple of weeks while the male goes hunting. Later they will take turns in responsibilities. The fascinating thing is that wolves are extremely faithful and basically stay together all the time in a range of about 100 meters. Most of the pups leave the pack when they are one year old. This usually happens in waves. Some leave a little earlier and others usually leave when the new offspring arrives. They are generally allowed to forage their parents' territory for a couple more years but ultimately try to find their own place. 
Like I mentioned before, wolf packs in Yellowstone are a bit different. Wolves were reintroduced to the area in 1995 and the packs here can be significantly bigger. However, the packs are still mainly formed by a pair of parents and their offspring. The difference is that the pups tend to stay a little longer with the pack, therefore leading to bigger numbers. Some are as old as 4 years of age when they leave. This can be traced back to the fact that the prey density in Yellowstone is much higher than in other regions of the world. Other variations of packs include packs where one of the deceased parents is replaced by a new partner, sometimes with cubs in tow. In larger packs, there may be situations where both mother and daughter give birth, but the daughter is still subordinate to the mother, although she retains control of her own offspring. However, in none of these outline situations is there any evidence of strength-based dominance hierarchy that occupies the public's mind. Instead, a wolf pack is a family unit where the parents, or in rare situations the grandparents, led by virtue of being the ones that brought the rest of the pack to life. And to finish things up, the term alpha wolf is no longer used by researchers and scientists, but it still seems to be quite popular elsewhere and probably remains so for some time. If you are one of those people who still believes in the idea of alpha male or alpha female, keep in mind that it only applies to individuals that are captive and cornered. I really hope you liked this video and learned something about this beautiful animal. If you did, please leave a like to show us that you enjoyed the content. Subscribe for more videos like this and everything nature and wildlife. But most importantly, have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day.